What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to use Matplotlib inside of TK Inter GUI applications. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to use Matplotlib inside of TK Inter GUI applications in this video today. So how to integrate Matplotlib inside of these GUI applications. Now, before we get into the code, I would like to show you the final result here as a preview. This is the application that we're going to end up with here. This is the example. And as you can see, it uses Matplotlib or it has a Matplotlib figure and canvas inside of the application. Now, this is not the same as using Matplotlib with widgets. This is actually a TK Inter application where Matplotlib is integrated into it. So the other way around, you could say. Um, and the example here just takes as input a CSV file and you can plot it as a bar plot, as a scatter plot or as a line plot. That's a very basic thing that you can do here. You can, of course, do whatever you want as a sample application, but this is what we're going to build here today. So let us get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the necessary packages installed. For this, open up the command line and type pip or pip3 install. And of course, we need matplotlib itself and we need pandas to process the CSV file. And these two packages are actually all we need because TK Inter is part of the core Python stack. And then we can go into the imports. We're going to import TK Inter as TK. We're going to import from TK Inter the file dialog because we need to open files from the file system. Uh, then we also want to import pandas as PD, matplotlib.pyplot splt. And finally, this is where it gets interesting from matplotlib.backends.backendtkac import figure canvas TK ACK. So this is what we're going to use here, the matplotlib backend to use it inside of TK Inter. And we're going to model our application as a class. So we're going to call this CSV plotter or something like this. Um, and we're going to say that we want to have an init method, a constructor, it takes root as an argument. And then we say self root equals root, root dot title. We're going to set the title to CSV plotter. And now we're going to add the different UI elements. Now, the first thing I want to add here is the drop down where we can choose the different methods. So for example, line plot, bar plot, scatter plot. And we're going to start by defining them as a list of possible types. So self dot plot types are going to be just a list of uh, line plot, bar plot, and scatter plot. And I want to take this and turn this into a string variable for TK or for TK enter that we can use um, in a different elements there. So self dot plot type variable is going to be equal to TK string variable. And this string variable will have the value by default, self dot plot types just index zero. So just line plot. Um, and now we're going to base on this list and on this variable, we're going to base a drop down menu. So we're going to say self dot uh, or actually, we don't need self dot, we can just say plot underscore menu is equal to TK option menu. And here we now need to pass a couple of things. First of all, the root. So self dot root. Um, second of all, we need to pass the current value or, or the string variable. Uh, in our case, self dot plot variable, then we also need to pass the possible values. And for this, we're going to just unpack the plot type. So uh, asterisk symbol, and then self dot plot types like this. Um, and finally, we need a command. So every time we change the selection, we want to actually call a function, which is going to update the plot so that you don't have to constantly load the CSV file again and again, when you just change uh, the plot type, you can change the plot type and the same data will be displayed differently. Um, so the command is going to be a method self dot update plot that we don't have implemented yet. So this is going to be the job of this function once we have it. Uh, let me just add a bunch of blank lines here so that I can keep the code up there. Um, all right, so that's the plot menu, then we're going to have the load button, the load button is just going to be a simple TK inter button. So TK button part of root. Uh, the text of this button is going to be load CSV. And the command of this button is going to be self dot load CSV, which is also a method, a class method that we don't have yet. Uh, we're going to implement it uh, in a second here. So load button pack, and I'm going to add some padding here of 10 for the x axis and 10 for the y axis. 
Now, actually, we also need to add the plot menu. So we need to say plot menu pack, also with a padding x of 10, padding y of 10. Um, and now we have these two buttons here. So the last thing that we need to add, and this is where it gets interesting, is we need to add the map.lib canvas or figure or whatever you want to call it. And how this works is first of all, you create a figure, a map.lib figure, then you um, create a canvas, and then you take from this canvas the widget for TK or for TK enter. So we say self.figure, self.axis is equal to PLT uh, subplots. So this is just the ordinary ordinary way to create uh, the figure and axis in matplotlib. And now what we want to do is want to say self dot canvas is equal to figure canvas TK act. And what we pass here is the figure. And we say master equals self root. So this is again, just the parent, uh, which is the whole graphical user interface. Now this canvas is not what we add to our uh, to our GUI application, what we do is we get the widget from it. So we say self dot widget is equal to self dot canvas, and then get TK widget, this is what we actually pack into our application. So self dot widget dot pack with padding x being equal to 10 padding y being equal to 10. Um, yeah, this is how we add this one. And then finally, for the init method, just self that data frame is going to be none in the beginning. So we don't have any data yet. And this is going to be important because we can then check when we load something when we update something if there actually is some data to be displayed. So let's define the two methods here load CSV. And the second one was update. What was it update plot, right? Yeah, update plot. Um, the update plot will also take an event. So the event by default will be none. But if there is an event, we can uh, handle it. I don't think that we need it. It's just that if we don't add this, it's going to have some problems with the function signature. Uh, but yeah, the load CSV function is going to be quite simple, we're going to ask uh, the user to choose a file. So the file path will will be the result of opening a file dialog. And the type is going to be the ask open file name file dialog. And then we're going to just say, um, or actually, if the file path was provided, we're going to load this into a data frame, we're going to say self dot data frame, which is what we defined up here is going to be equal to PD dot read CSV file path. And then we're going to update the plot based on this. So the update plot method takes the data frame and the current option and just plots everything. So this is where all of the logic happens. So what we're going to do now here is if self .df is not none, this is important, because if it is none, we're, got, we're going to do nothing, there's no data to be displayed. So we just do nothing. If it is none, what we do is, uh, if it is not none, so if there is actually data, we're going to get the plot type. So the plot type is going to be equal to self dot plot type variable dot get so we get the value of the string variable that is influenced by our choice in the drop down menu. And we get the x axis is going to be or the x values are just going to be the first column of the CSV file and the y values are going to be the second column of the CSV file. So basically just df column, uh, or actually self dot df columns, and zero, and y is going to be one. Um, all right, so maybe we should just create one so that you know what it looks like. Let's call this data dot CSV. We're going to just have something very simple and abstract here variable one variable two are going to be the names of the variables, this is going to be relevant for the label and then we can have some values like one is going to be 20, two is going to be 30, three is going to be five, four is going to be 70, five is going to be 80, six is going to be 10, seven is going to be 10. Yeah, let's keep it at that. So this is just some sample data, of course, you can have all the data you want here, you can have age and height, you can have, uh, I don't know, IQ and grade or something like this, whatever you want, just some CSV file with two variables that you want to visualize here. Um, self dot x clear to get rid of all the stuff that is already part of the plot. So basically, reset it. And then we just say if the plot type is equal to line plot, what we want to do in this case is we want to do self axis plot 
And what we want to plot is, of course, self dot data frame x self dot data frame y. Now, these are not the columns, these are the column names. So columns is just a collection of the column names, in our case, variable one, variable two, and here we can select them. Um, yeah, you can also do it directly, actually. But yeah, let's do it like this. Um, and the label of that plot is going to be an F string, which says x versus or actually, maybe we should do y first, y versus x. Now, this is for the line plot, then we can say elif plot type is not line plot, but bar plot. If that is the case, we want to do something similar. But this time we're going to do axis dot bar. And um, yeah, actually, the rest stays the same. And then elif plot type is equal to scatter plot. Want to copy this. And we want to do dot scatter and the rest again stays the same. Finally, what we want to do is we want to say self dot axis dot set underscore x label is going to be x. So the name of of the column, um, which automatically happens because when you do read CSV, the first file is uh, the first line is considered to be the column names, you don't have to manually program that it's already the case. We do the same thing for y. And then what we do is we say self dot x dot legend. And finally, self dot canvas draw, this is important, because you need to draw the actual changes onto the canvas. So that is basically our class, all we need to do now is we need to say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore uh, main underscore underscore then we're going to do the following, we're going to say root is equal to TK, TK, with a capital T. And then we say app is going to be equal to CSV plotter taking root as a parameter here, and then root main loop. That is our application, I can run it, I can choose the data CSV. This is the data CSV, I can go to bar plot, I can go to scatter plot, this is how it works. And this is how you can integrate matplotlib components, matplotlib figures into TK inter by using the matplotlib backend. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.